Hello students and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to review the sarcomere. Right off the bat, I want you to know that the boundary between one sarcomere and the adjacent sarcomere is being done by the Z-line, also known as the Z-disc. So the Z-line or the Z-disc, and it could be disc with the C or a K, is the boundary between one sarcomere and the adjacent sarcomere. Remember that the sarcomere is the functional unit of the muscle fiber. All right. Now let's identify some other structures. We also see that this pink structure, that's representing your actin. Your actin is your thin filament, okay? The purple, that's your myosin. The myosin is your thick filament. All right, let's talk about some other structures here. This structure is called the M-line. And the M line is going to anchor only the myosin, okay? So the M line anchors the myosin. What anchors the actin? Well, it's this protein that's called titan. Titan is going to anchor the actin with the Z line or the Z disc. Do you see that? All right. So now that we established some criteria, we can move on identifying some bands. You are responsible to know two bands. The first one, and I'm going to draw it out for you. This is called, and it goes roughly about, I would say here, from here to here. This is called the I band, okay? And you're going to remember this. The I band is lighter, appears lighter in color. The I for light, okay? And it appears lighter in color because we have only the thin filaments, which is actin, actin, and actin. You, have, you also have titan and the Z-line. So the I-band includes the actin, titan, and the Z-line, or the Z-disc. Those are the structures. You also are responsible to know your A-band. And your A-band... Let's try that again, right there. Your A band, A band, is going to appear darker, okay? So A in dark, I in light. So the reason why it appears darker in color is because one, you have the zone of overlap, okay? And the zone of overlap is that region where it includes myosin and actin, myosin and actin myosin and actin. This is your zone of overlap, okay? Do you see that? That's your zone of overlap. But you also have within that A band, you have the H zone or the H band. And the H zone is going to include only, and I'm going to draw that here, it's going to include only your myosin. So up to here, Okay, and I hope that you can see all the way down. It only includes your myosin. So that H band includes only the myosin. All right, so let's continue. I am going to blow up a piece of actin right here. So we're going to take a look at piece of actin. So we're no longer, we're no longer looking at this string what I did is I blew it up for you. So now we're looking at these beads. So the actin is going to be composed of these beads that are called the G proteins, okay? And the G proteins are going to have these active sites. So the active sites are found at the G proteins of actin. The active sites are also known as the binding sites. All right, now, the binding sites are being covered by a protein sheath, okay? And this protein sheath is called your tropomyosin. So the tropomyosin is that protein that covers the active sites. However, it's being held in place by, and I'm going to use another color. Let's try, uh, let's try this color. It's being held in place 
by these other proteins by the name of troponin, okay? So troponin are those. Again, tropomyosin is that sheet, that protein sheet that's covering the active sites. Troponin are those locks that are keeping it in place. Now, you need the presence of a calcium ion to bind. So calcium binds with the troponin, right? And once it binds to the troponin, troponin is going to be removed. And once it's removed, we can now have the tropomyosin move away. And now as it moves away, I'm just going to put it off to the side. Now that it moves away, we have those active sites that now are available. And take a look. Remember that we have those myosin heads. I'm just going to draw them here for you. So now we have the active sites that are available and they're going to now bind to the myosin heads right there, okay? And it's going to power stroke. It's going to move and it's going to move it closer. These power strokes are going to move it closer, okay? And you are going to need ATP to release. You need ATP to release the head of the myosin from the active site. All right, so now let's talk about how this is going to occur. I drew for you a motor neuron. So this is a motor neuron, okay? So bear with me. An action potential is going to travel down the motor neuron, down to the, uh, the axon terminal, okay? And it's going to cause these vesicles that are going to hold a neurotransmitter by the name of acetylcholine, ACH. Acetylcholine, really important, that's your neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine is then going to be released into the neuromuscular junction, so that space is called your neuromuscular junction. And so as that neurotransmitter is being released into that neuromuscular junction, it's going to bind with specific receptors, and I'm just drawing your receptors, and those receptors are found in the motor end plate. So that is called your motor end plate, okay? So your motor end plate is your post synaptic Synaptic membrane. Okay, I'll say that again. Your motor end plate is your post synaptic membrane. Post means after. Your presynaptic membrane is part of your neuron. Okay, so your presynaptic membrane is that neuron. The post synaptic membrane is that motor end plate of the sarcolemma of that muscle fiber. All right, so now that we established that the neurotransmitter is going to bind with the specific receptor that is found at the motor end plate of the postsynaptic membrane, the action potential then is going to travel down the T-tubule. So that's called the T-tubule, okay? So the action potential travels down the T-tubule and it gets to this region that's called the triad. And the triad is composed of two terminal cisterni, that's the terminal cisterni, and one T-tubule, okay? So one T-tubule plus two terminal cisterni make up that triad. Okay, so now that we establish that the action potential arrives here, it's going to tell the sarcoplasmic reticulum hey buddy, I need you to do me a favor and release calcium ions. Ah, very important. Remember that we discussed about this? So the calcium ion is being released. And again, I hope you remember that we talked about here that the calcium ions, and I'm just going to remove that for you. Remember that we talked about these tropomyosin 
that was covering and that we had these other proteins. I hope that you remember the name. The name was the troponin. Remember that I told you that calcium binds to troponin. This is the significance. Without calcium, you're not going to remove these troponins. So now that calcium binds, guess what? We remove that, we remove the whole thing. Now we can have binding of that great myosin head. We have that power stroke. And once it moves, the only way that we can remove the head from the active site is by using a form of energy of ATP. Before I finish, I want to conclude by saying that remember when we have a contraction, and I'm just going to talk about because this is really important, what happens to the Z disc or the Z line is that it's going to come closer. So take a look, it comes closer, okay? So the Z disc or the Z line come closer. That's thing number one. Thing number two, let's take a look at the H band or the H zone. The H band or the H zone, the H band is going to decrease in size. Remember that we had it really, really big right here, but as the actin comes closer, the H band also decreases in length. So the H band decreases. What also gets smaller? The I band. Remember that the I band was this. The I band is going to also decrease in size, in length, okay? But what happens with the zone of overlap? The zone of overlap is going to get larger because now we're moving more things closer. So the zone of overlap, zone of overlap, overlap increases, okay? So the zone of overlap is going to increase. The A band, remember that the A band, we talked about this, the A band, which includes the zone of overlap and the H band is going to remain the same, no change, remain the same. It doesn't move, it just remains the same. It remains constant. What also remains constant is the length, okay? So the lengths of the actin and myosin are going to remain the same, okay? That's an M, oops, and myosin. They're going to remain the same, okay? But the distance is what changes. The distance only becomes shorter, but the length remains the same. All right. I hope that this video cleared some things up for you, and I wish you the best of luck during your examination. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below for future videos.